My name is Stephanie simmons Lukowski, and I'm the Associate Director of the Learning Systems Institute at Florida State University. I'm one of the authors of the pre-service teacher education how-to guide, and I'm happy to be here today with patients to present it to you. The guide is divided into four content areas. PSTE structure and curriculum, establishing a quality teaching practicum, supporting teacher educator and institutional capabilities, and improving teacher selection and deployment. Next Greetings, slide, oh, sorry, please, patience. I was just going to introduce myself again. That's fine, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Greetings. My name is Patience. Go ahead. Next slide, please, Alice. Thank you. The purpose of this guide is to underline the important role played by pre-service teacher education programs and to suggest ways that they can be better leveraged to improve foundational literacy and numeracy learning in low and middle income countries. Pre-service teacher education provides the foundation that new teachers rely on in their classrooms, yet it's generally left out of large scale interventions, which instead focus on in-service teachers. As a consequence, pre-service teacher education programs are frequently disengaged from what's happening in schools, which means that new teachers enter the workforce without the skills that current foundational literacy and numeracy programs require. In this guide, we offer suggestions to policymakers, donors, implementers, and teacher educators on how to more effectively develop primary level pre-service teacher education for foundational literacy and numeracy. We also point to several areas where more research is needed to guide policy and practice. Next slide, please. The structure of PSTE programs varies widely across countries. In some countries, those who complete 10th grade but did not perform well enough to continue on to senior secondary school can enroll in teacher training programs. Increasingly, other countries are requiring a four-year college degree, even for primary teachers. The African Union's African Teacher Qualification Framework states that the minimum qualification for teachers should now be a bachelor's degree in education, though this has not yet been widely implemented in member countries due to the associated costs and logistical challenges. Regardless of their length and structure, pre-service programs should be designed to connect theory and practice. New teachers need to understand the content of the subjects they teach, how to teach specific subjects to students, and how to teach well in general, including classroom management and student engagement. The curriculum should be aligned with national standards and must prepare pre-service teachers for real classrooms, considering class sizes, resource levels, and student characteristics like home language diversity. Over to you, Patience. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm going to talk about uh, an essential component of a pre-service teacher education program, and that is the establishment of a quality teaching practicum. The teaching practicum is part of the pre-service teacher education program where PS pre-service teachers teach in schools under the supervision of a mentor teacher. It's been shown to be a very effective way of preparing pre-service teachers for teaching, developing their professional identities, their professional dispositions, and in all, honing their skills to get them ready for becoming beginning teachers. The research demonstrates that the stronger the teacher education practicum, the better quality of teachers countries produce. In our guide, we have several suggestions for establishing quality practica um, for pre-service teachers. One of these is intentionally placing them with quality partner schools and excellent mentor teachers who give high quality feedback. We also recommend sent, uh, setting a minimum length of duration of the practica. And this is because we realized in the literature as we were preparing the guide that some practica are as short as two weeks and as long as nine months. But the literature does indicate that the longer the practica, the better. Um, so this is another one recommendation that we would like to give. Another important suggestion we have is ensuring that the practica are scaffolded. 
so that pre-service teachers in their practicum learn and are provided with a growing autonomy. So for example, this would look like perhaps them starting with observing teaching, good teaching in schools, then taking on a few lessons, and then by the end of the practicum, actually taking over the classroom, provide, uh, preparing lessons and teaching children. We also encourage pre-service teacher education programs to nurture reflective practice while, while pre-service teachers are participating in the practicum. And to do this, we want them to support teachers and guide them to learn how to reflect, and most important of all, what students are learning before, during, and after teaching. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you, Patience. In this guide, we stress the need for greater attention to the professional development of teacher educators. Pre-service teachers will model their own teaching style on the methods they see used by their teacher educators. Given the disconnect between PSTE programs and what's happening in primary schools, this is a problem. Primary school curricula are becoming increasingly engaging and interactive, while pre-service programs remain teacher educator-centered and lecture-based. As one College of Education principal in Zambia told me earlier this year, her students graduate, quote, looking rusty as if they finished 20 years ago. This disconnect can lead to contradictory beliefs and approaches among new teachers. We make three recommendations in the guide to address these issues. First, PSTE programs should hire lecturers who have academic training and teaching expertise directly related to the post. Someone who has excelled as a primary grade teacher is a better fit for a primary PSTE program than someone who was a secondary school science teacher, for example. Second, teacher educators should have continuous professional development opportunities and PSTE programs should receive budgetary support for this. Third, PSTE institutions need to be resourced with current primary grades, textbooks, curricula, manipulatives, and other teaching aids that are currently used in primary schools. This will allow teacher educators to stay current on what is happening in schools and to incorporate these materials into their teaching. Back over to you, Patience. Thank you, Stephanie. As Asia mentioned earlier in, in her uh, introduction, teacher selection and deployment are another essential feature of pre-service teacher education. In our guide, we define selection as the procedures that are used to attract candidates to enter teacher education programs and deployment as the process of placing teachers both beginning and experienced into schools in various regions in country contexts. It's important to pay particular attention to pre-service teacher selection and teacher deployment policies in low and middle income countries because they can affect the quality of teachers who enter the profession and the number of teachers who stay in the profession. In, in light of this, pre-service teacher education programs we recommend need to find strategies, as um, Asia also mentioned, which include the selection of strong candidates and candidates who, um, to a certain extent, have the dispositions, the passion and the motivation to become a teacher and not enter the profession as a fallback because they didn't get high enough grades in the high stakes uh, examinations that we often have in low and middle income countries. Um, in the case of ministries of education in these countries, they need to also ensure that enough teachers are being trained for country needs, and they also need to address delays in deploying teachers to schools. Some of our suggestions that we have in the guide in terms of improving teacher selection and deployment are, first of all, conducting a needs assessment. In other words, countries need to have a sense of how many teachers they have, how many they need, which regions they should be in, even down to how, what languages the teachers speak so they can better serve the children in teaching the language of instruction in various areas. 
Incentives across the board are also crucial. Uh, Pre-service teachers should have scholarships, particularly scholarships that target women, persons with disabilities, and people who are proficient in multiple languages. For in-service teachers, there should be access to courses in career um, advancements. And they should also be given stipends if they are deployed to rural and challenging areas. And this brings up another issue. The, and this is the need for pre-service teacher education programs to expose pre-service teachers to rural schools in their practicum. And this would be in order to dispel the misconceptions that they had about teaching in these areas and also teach them how to handle the various challenges they might encounter what, if they are deployed to these schools in the future. Induction is the final suggestion we have in this um, for this feature. And induction it, uh, that assists you into transition and uh, adapt to the workplace. Uh, induction programs serve to support teacher well being and retention, and the stronger programs last for more than a year. The next slide, Alice. So it may be my internet, but I'll go ahead and conclude so we can move on to our panelists. So in conclusion, in our guide, we recommend that country education stakeholders, donors, and implementers in low and middle income countries place more emphasis on the preparation of teachers. We suggest that this will lead to a more sustainable and quality teaching workforce. And to do so, we recommend in the guide that pre-service teacher education programs take a closer look at uh, the structure and curricula of pre-service teacher education programs. They establish quality teaching practica, that they support educator and institutional capabilities, and that they improve teacher selection and deployment. As Stephanie has stated, and as I'm sure you'll hear from our panelists, the lack of resources is the primary reason for many of the challenges in pre-service teacher education. So some of the suggestions we have for cutting down some immediate things that perhaps countries, donors, and implementers can do is involve pre-service teacher education programs in their foundational literacy and numeracy activities. So for example, they could have teacher education educators attend their teacher trainings, or they could actually train teacher educators to be master trainers and participate in the foundational literacy and numeracy programs. Another thing donors and implementers can do is to provide copies of the teaching and learning materials that foundational literacy and um, programs develop to pre-service teacher education programs so that the pre-service teachers will be familiar with these materials if they happen to be deployed to regions that are using these materials. Most of all, we need more studies to be conducted in various aspects of pre-service teacher education. In the work that Stephanie and I and our other collaborators did, um, in the development of the guide, we recognized and discovered that there's a paucity of research on this topic. And so we encourage stakeholders to conduct rigorous large scale uh, research that tracks, for example, pre-service teachers over time when they become teachers, uh, what they do when they become teachers and, and their impact on student learning outcomes. Um, other areas of research could be perceived preparation for teaching, um, mentor teachers and their experiences, and the types of incentives that um, will reduce disparities in the distribution of qualified and effective teachers. So conducting research on pre-service teacher education um, in low and middle income 
countries is vital because these research findings can lead to the, the development of an evidence base, which can inform pre-service teacher education, policy development, and reform. We hope our guide serves as a springboard to continue discussions and research to strengthen teacher education programs in low and middle income countries. Thank you.